Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to visit with you today as the trustees of the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame uh, to consider who should be the next inductee in the modern era ranching category. This evidently, and I mean very, very much, is a prestigious honor, and I'm proud uh, that the Cowboy Hall of Fame uh, recognizes such an important category for our state of North Dakota. My name is Nancy Jo Bateman, and I've had the honor of working for every rancher in our state for the last 35 years as the executive director of the North Dakota Beef Commission. These ranchers, every one of them, are the cream of the crop in my opinion, and all deserving. But as with all things, there always seems to be a few people that rise to the top as leaders, as achievers, and as standouts. Pat Efforts of the Efforts Key Ranch in Velva is one of those individuals. And I'm proud to represent all of the people that have sent letters of recommendation uh, and their family today. If you've ever met Pat, you understand when I say he is a friendly and humble person. I've had the opportunity to know Pat over the last 40 years, first through several of his children that attended NDSU at the same time I did, and then many years later when he served as one of my board members for the North Dakota Beef Commission, and it continues today when he decides to stop in our office for a cup of coffee and just to find out again, now what's new, Nancy, uh, when he's got business in Bismarck. Early on, <clears throat> and Kay and Dale will uh, understand what I'm saying here, I have to admit I truly wondered what kind of a person could be the father to such high-energy young people. And some of you that know the efforts know what I'm talking about. Uh, that were also so committed to agriculture and specifically the cattle business. And I'm talking about at least eight of their 13 children uh, that I know and have worked with over my career. And I also was equally curious about the woman behind the man, Pat's wife Loretta, who for years I only knew as mother whenever Pat or the children referred to her. I mean, and it was endearing respect. She obviously had her hands full with seven boys and six girls, all active and growing into great adults, and who shared their dad's passion for family, friends, the land, and the livestock. Over the years, I've had the privilege to get to know Pat very well, and I truly understand where his children's passion for the cattle industry comes from. But first, let me give you a brief lead up to the Pat efforts and the efforts Key Ranch we know today. It took lots of work, lots of risk, lots of penciling it out, and I'm sure lots of prayer for Loretta. This modern era ranch was truly started by Pat at an early age. His dad, a homesteader near Velva, died in the field when Pat was only 13. Being the youngest of eight children in his family, he and the next younger brother pitched in to help their oldest brother work their farm. Then, after finishing high school, Pat joined the military in the World War II area and rose to a naval junior engineer in the Merchant Marines. I actually didn't really know exactly what that was, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and he sailed in the Pacific and Okinawa area, which wasn't particularly safe in the World War II times. His common sense and interest and ability to fix almost anything helped him to assist in saving two different ships that he was assigned to. And after returning home from the service, he worked for a short time as an apprentice electrician and was able to return home and purchase the farm from his brother in 1950. From that modest homesteaded acreage, he and Loretta built a sizable working purebred cattle ranch that would support their family of 13 children. Pat, now 92, is still actively involved with the ranch's management along with his seven sons and one son-in-law. I dare say that a lot of us couldn't probably even fathom how you could make that work, and they do. Although ranching is typically steeped in tradition, and at this point in time you would be many generations from that founding family member or the homesteader, the efforts key ranch that Pat has built is anything but traditional. He knew that starting from scratch meant taking risks and with new technology and progressive agriculture practice and livestock genetics. If a new idea made common sense and it penciled out, Pat was always an early adopter. 
He also, uh, you also have to remember that in his early years in the cattle business, AI was still simply vowels in the alphabet. And it, back then it took some cows and a bull to make things happen. When we think back now, it might seem crazy to think of this, but it was revolutionary to go from square bales to round bales. But he made that move ahead of most of his neighbors and friends. And I'm sure he had to deliberate about that because if it was like at our home when I was growing up, those square bales uh, were not just feed for cattle. They were sometimes uh, weight training and other times they were punishment. <laughs> Steve knows what we're talking about here. Um, his kids will tell you, though, that like almost all other implements on the ranch, when they went to a round baler, that baler spent a lot of time in the shop for Pat to make modifications because he's extremely talented at that. His commitment to innovation and economics also made Pat an early advocate for soil conservation and controlling leafy spurs, spurge because the land and the grass, of course, are critical to any ranch. When the cattle industry started talking about performance testing, embryo transfers, and DNA testing to identify superior bloodlines, Pat was at the front of the line. Purebred Charlet cattle were also something that Pat staked his claim on starting in 1959. And two years later, all excited about his Charlet bulls, he set out for the Denver, Denver National Western Stock Show to show his two bulls and loaded them in the back of a 58 Ford pickup with the stock racks. 20 years later, with a nicer pickup and a trailer, he would exhibit the national champion Charlet Bull at the Denver Stock Show with many numerous awards to follow. As genetics and research progressed, the mid-70s found Pat adding Solaire cattle to the ranch's purebred breeding program. And I knew this, but it made me kind of question his thinking because my only experience as a young bride was leasing some Angus Solaire cross cattle in the early 80s. And we were given some sage advice from a Badlands rancher that when you chase these cattle, you don't worry about the gates. You just head them the direction you want to go. But the trick is, don't push them too hard when you get towards the fence. Because if you push them too hard, they'll take the top wire every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Pat had a little more vision, I think, than we did at our place. But these French cattle weren't uh, even in our country in the early 70s. So he and two other cattlemen imported the first Solaire sire from France to the United States. That bull, the American Solaire Association's number one registered animal, was named Jet, and it turned out to be one of the most influential sires of that, in breed, of that entire breed. And think of that impact on the breed today. Today, the Efforts Key Ranch produces purebreds and composites of these two breeds, as well as Angus Solaire and Red Angus Solaire composites. Again, as an innovator, Pat began DNA testing for leptin, a gene associated with superior feed efficiency and eating quality and marbling in 1998. This is about the time that I really saw Pat's passion for good research as he got involved with the research efforts uh, on the North Dakota Beef Commission and with our national checkoff organizations. With an emphasis on raising cattle that combine ranch, feedlot, and carcass performance with a consistent and quality eating experience, the Efforts Key Ranch genetics continue to build and improve under Pat's leadership yet today. In summary, Pat has been a leader at the local, state, and national level, an innovator in a long list of things, a risk taker without a doubt, and has been passionate about the beef business his entire life. The only thing that has surpassed this has been his passion for his family and their opportunity to continue on in ranching for many more generations. And with 32 grandchildren and 15 great-grandchildren, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Pat Efforts is truly a modern-era rancher. Thank you very much.